All yep. right, everyone, let's get going here. We are about to, ha I want to spend every minute with Tom and Chris. So welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Laurel or Rel. I'm with the Educators in VR and we're helping to uh, co-host and help produce this event for Virtual World Society. If you are not, how many of you are familiar with Virtual World Society? Give me some hearts. Yeah, let's have you some hearts. Know? Where's yeah. Hearts, Virtual World yeah, Society? Yeah, let's get some hearts, yeah. Oh, hey, Caitlin. <laughs> Thank Welcome you. Welcome, excellent. Thank There's you. Caitlin's here. Yeah. All right, fantastic. You got fans here, Tom. This is yeah. beautiful. So it looks yeah. like most of you know about it, and Tom's going to tell you a little more about it um, as we go forward. But I just want to I want to thank Tom and the Virtual World Society, as well as his guests, which we'll talk about in just a minute, for coming here into Alt Space and being brave enough to walk the walk to actually spend <laughs> decades and decades and decades in VR and developing, um, for those that don't know Tom Furness, we call him the grandfather. He used to be the father, then he got old on us. How dare you? <laughs> um, yeah. And um, we're still working on that. You know, you, on your list of things, Tom, is immortality. Keep working on it. Um, so <laughs> virtual immortality. We're going to go for it. But he is classified as the grandfather of VR. You would not be sitting there with these things on your faces, these headsets and stuff, if it wasn't for the work, the innovative work that he has done through all the bazillion years uh -huh. that he's been working on this. And to bring him into VR so he could actually see the manifestation, um, not the infection, the manifestation <laughs> of, of yeah. the immer the community that we have created here. Honestly, he, he it was only just a, a pipe dream that people would actually use this. I mean, not a pipe dream to use it. Thought it'd be useful, but didn't hadn't really foreseen how we use it today for socialization and connection. For those of us who have been suffering with lockdown for too many months. You have this mm -hmm. VR has brought us to connect together and to build relationships and maintain them in a way unlike yeah. Zoom and the rest have ever done. So thank you for your contribution to help build that. And that is part of what is going on here today, which is about the connections and the relationships. And so Tom is going to introduce to you our special guest speaker that's going to be really helping us see how we can create future leaders in technology and embrace the diversity and the magic in all of us. So Tom, over to you. It's all yours, my friend. Laurel, you're so sweet. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, I'm going to have to raise your pay, you know. Yeah, thank you. All I these nice things you said. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, thanks, everyone. It's so wonderful to see you and those of you who are in the uh, the other rooms. Uh, wonderful to see you, too. Uh, at least we'll hopefully see your bubbles uh, with uh, emojis coming out. And then later on, we can invite you into into this room. And so, uh, um, so today is a really cool and special day. I mean, we've been sort of ginning, ginning on this for some time. I asked um, Chris uh, months ago if he would be willing to uh, join me in a fireside chat. And, and that, uh, he said, yes, uh, that sounds like fun. And then I got him involved in all kinds of other stuff. <laughs> he, he probably may, may rue the day and he met me because now he's sucked into all kinds of things. And uh, so uh, 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 I'm not sorry for that. Chris, I mean, uh, but um, uh, maybe you are, but I'm not. <laughs> so let me welcome Chris Lafayette, amazing guy. Now, Chris is an international speaker. He's an IT expert. He has done it all. Uh, not only that, he loves Corvettes, and that's sort of a, something that uh, is a common bond we have, right? Uh, of course, I I had to sell my Corvette and buy a station wagon because I started getting kids. And uh, uh, I don't know if that, that probably didn't happen to you, but that's what happened to me. So I haven't, I've yet to get my 1961 Corvette back again. But uh, nevertheless, uh, Chris is here with us and he has, a, he's dynamite, not a dynamite guy. He has all kinds of things to tell us about what he's up to these days. So Chris, I'm going to uh, start asking you some questions. And uh, sure. Uh, some of them you know I may be asking, but some of them you may not. I bet right. you are an annoying kid. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, really, I mean, what was it like for you growing up? Now, I don't know a little bit of background, but I think everybody would like to know about your, sure. your background, what you were like growing up. 
of course. And can everyone hear me properly? Uh, I'm oh, certainly, yeah. Yeah, I do, you're good. before I get to that, I certainly want to express my thanks for the opportunity to spend time with you here, Tom, on this stage. Um, uh, more importantly, thank you to um, the Virtual World Society and, uh, of course, thank you to educators and VR for helping put together this uh, this particular event and then more importantly for everyone that's come to listen and to hear what we have to express and to share. And uh, I know that we're here on this stage, but we certainly wouldn't be here uh, without all of you uh, to be able to express uh, your desire to learn more and to ingress in such virtual spaces in these particular times. And as Tom said, I echo the sentiment that this certainly is an opportunity for us to be able to come together in congregated virtual spaces to talk about more of what we could do. And now we've found a safe way to keep safe and socially distanced as we should be, uh, as responsibly as mm -hmm. we should be. And so I'm really appreciative of this opportunity uh, to be with you all. And so I'd be remiss at not expressing that. Uh, just grateful and spiritually grateful to be frank. Uh, to answer your question, um, <laughs> when I was a kid, uh, I would come home and there was a man sitting at a desk and this man would sit at this table with a little line on and he'd be tearing apart and fixing up computers and i'd go to this man and, and i'd say dad what's the internet and this man would go about to tell me what the internet was and i'd come home the next day and i'd walk in in the same home in east oakland california in the bay area and i'd walk in and i'd go up to this man in this desk, sitting at this table with a little light on, again, and tearing up and fixing down computers, I'm sitting in his chair, and I say, Dad, how does the web work? And that man would go about to tell me how the web worked. And as the years went on, as things gone further in life, and after his departure in life, if you will, I didn't really have an a significant appreciation until years down the road where there's two things that occurred to me. One, that I had grown up in a household because people that look like me and people that come from where I come from, they didn't necessarily have a parent that was in technology. And I grew up in a household where I had that. But I also realized going back in places like East Oakland or Compton or Brooklyn and things of that nature, that looking back where I come from, in the neighborhoods, there wasn't too many people that even had a dad. Mm. And so I came to Silicon Valley with black colored skin. Um, and I realized that the beginning constructs or the beginning understandings of technology came from this black man that had such a wild and significant opportunity that he handed down to his son. And when I came to Silicon Valley, I found myself being taught by women and men from different areas and places that did not look like me. And as we go on today, we'll be able to fill in some of the gaps of what happened in my sojourn in Silicon Valley to find myself here speaking with you all. From sleeping outside of Google, living out of hacker spaces, building out of hotels on someone else's sofa, uh, living outside of Apple, uh, finding a way in Silicon Valley, uh, with just across the bridge in Oakland, California, in the tale of two cities, there just wasn't too many people in technology. And when I came to Silicon Valley, I came to find that there wasn't too many people that looked like me. So growing up, it was less about education and more about surviving. And now that I have survived or come from the place where I come from and with the opportunities I've been given, it began to dawn on me at some point that I had to go back because as great as technology has been developed, even while we yet sit here in this virtual contract. I can remember having dinner with the people that actually built all space. It's sitting in this contract and as great as technology has been over the last 10 to 20 years that as much as we have accomplished, technology will never be as great as it can be, Tom, until all people have the opportunity to build it, no matter the color, no matter the gender. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so listening to your question and having the opportunity to have a kid from East Oakland sit with a Tom Furness, <laughs> it's just something that you don't see and, and candidly is something I never would have imagined. But nonetheless, it's here and I plan on to take full advantage of this opportunity, but I can't do it alone. So I hope that answers a little uh, bit about it. Oh, it does. It does. Now, so you had this uh, role model 
that it, that was really unique because yeah. of your your heritage and ethnicity and so forth. And uh, you, obviously, that had a great impact on you and uh, got you excited about this whole high tech uh, area of things. Now, your father went on. Tell us more about what your father ended up doing. Well, he was an IT admin, but he started off in the military, and then we came to Oakland uh, from the south. And as a lot of people, particular color, have come for new opportunities, searching for gold, if you will. And we searched for new opportunities. We found ourselves in Oakland. And I tell you what, in Oakland in the 90s, you know, some of you may remember, some of you may not, but it was not the ideal place for you to feel like, you know, it certainly wasn't the breakfast club. And so coming to Oakland in the 90s and and going to school and learning. And so my dad had to find a way and fight a way. And, you know, I can remember my dad working at a print company, uh, frankly, and transparently, and he would put the package, packaging label and graveyard shift on cans of green bees and, 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 and packages that you find in, in the frozen section of the store. He would do that and have these great big rollers that he would have and carry on his shoulders. It was breaking his back. He was working hard, but he provided, and along with my mom, who was a nurse, and we definitely love our first responders that are on the front lines today, don't we? Yes. And so she was a nurse, and so she was doing her part, and she was working in the day, and my dad at night. And so, Tom, one day they came to that print company, and they said, well, we're getting ready to shut this down. It's being bought out, but everybody that works here has an opportunity to go to school, and we'll pay for it. And I'm so grateful that my dad was given the good sense to say, well, I want to be in technology. And little did I know that that decision would influence all his sons and that my dad would take the steps of technology and that I would take the steps of technology as well. And so he went to school and got in technology and then a university by the name of Cal Berkeley. I'm sure some of you have heard of it. <laughs> university of Berkeley hired my dad and he worked there for years and years, almost 17 years. He worked there. They did really right by him. He became an IT admin. He would take a little or crisp and he would take me in the middle of the night to go fix the servers at the whole university. They say, hey, you want to come with me to go fix these servers? Sure, Dad. And I was a punk kid at the time, to be frank, but I would go with them. I see and I was fascinated by that. And from that, it serves an example that if my dad can do this, then I absolutely know that I can do this. Even in the face of implicit and explicit bias, the challenge, you couldn't tell me that I couldn't be like my dad. And so having that opportunity uh, is a game changer. Um, you think about it, and it's emotional because he's no longer uh, physically here. He's in my heart. But to see what you do for a living um, and to see in the mirror, to see the same thing that your dad did or a parent did means something. But it means even more to me to know that there's so many other people who come from where I come from that have not had these opportunities. And there's not too many people that can create this bridge between Silicon Valley and the open Californias of this world of underrepresented people. That's whether you're a woman, a black woman, a black man, a person of color, communities of color. And at some point, I realized that it's no longer enough for a few of us to get a job at Google or Apple, but I'll be more satisfied when people like me build the next Google and Apple. Yes. Well, well, Chris. Now, let's let's turn to our audience for a second. And uh, any of, have any of you had experiences where you have had role models, uh, either parents or others, that have provided for you that same impetus uh, that Chris has had with his father, that has made a difference, that has have lifted you from what you had before? Perhaps we could have uh, some responses from the audience, Laurel. Yes, indeed. So the raise hand button is should now be up. And if you'd like to share your story, please hit the raise hand button. Keely, you're up. All right. Thank you. Um, yeah, Chris, thank you for sharing that um, the story. Oh, did Chris leave for you, anyone? You'll be coming back. You'll be coming oh, back shortly. Okay. But this is all okay, recorded. Yeah. So uh, 
So you can okay, go ahead okay. and make your comment. Yeah. Uh, so, so his story really touched me because my dad, um, he's, he's one of my role models in my life. And he also works uh, at a university in a tech position. Um, he teaches uh, computer science and whatnot, but he's, he's helped out with other tech issues as well. But it kind of touched my heart because at my university, there's this really large tower. And I remember he bought me there once when I was really little, like take your kid to work day kind of thing. And he brought me up to the top and I looked down and I saw all these people and I thought, oh, I'll never be smart enough to, to go to this school. I'll never, I, I'm not cool like these people. And, and he just looked at me and said, you know, you are smart, you can do it. And then fast forward about 10 years or so later and then I was enrolled at that same school. So, and I just kept thinking like, he said I could do it, mm -hmm. you know, and he can do it, I can do it too. So, yeah. Thanks for thanks sharing for that, your Jane. story, Chris. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Keely. That's wonderful. Any other yes. uh, uh, role models? Yes, we have uh, quite a like few Keely. here. Okay. Yay, excellent. All right. So, Mr. Blade, would you like to share your story? First of all, I'd like to, to uh, thank you, Christopher, for being there and being a voice for those of us of color. I, um, I'm honored to be in the same room with all these great minds. I actually have a story that's three generations long. I'll try and make it short. It started with my mom. My mother was the uh, second youngest of um, 18 children. <laughs> and yeah, believe it, back in the South when they had nothing better to do. But um, she was a nurse and my dad worked for the post office. He's all, he was also a retired military. Well, um, my dad, brought home a uh, computer from the post office and he sat down and uh, he said, Mildred, what am I going to do with this? We're all, there was four of us and we're all very young. And my mother goes, I don't know, just another piece of useless junk you decide to bring home from work. And he goes, well, let's just go ahead and put it in the den. So my mother <laughs> one day came home and she was pissed off at her boss. And she said, you know what? I'm tired of this. There's too much garbage in this house. She sat down at that computer and she went to unplug it and then it came on. And this is back when they have floppy drives. <laughs> so it was a roar, it whirred up. And then my mother had a book. It was a, an Adelphi programming book. My mother looked at it and now she dropped out of high school in the eighth grade, but she decided she was going to make use of that piece of garbage. She actually began to program and write her own games. Now, I was a little skinny <laughs> kid, you know, we were half breed children, half Native American, half African American. So I had a bad inferiority complex. My mother told me to come into the den one day and she says, Bear, that's my nickname. She goes, Bear, come in and sit down. I want you to help me with something. She's because you're smarter than me. I'm like, Mom, I'm not smarter than you. Look, you're you're doing this with this computer. And she's like, just read this to me. And then so we began these regular sessions where I'd read it to her and she says, now, can you do it? Because she started getting older and her hands started hurting arthritis. And she says, can you do it? So before you knew it, she taught me how to make these games and these programs in Adelphi. Now, fast forward, it is now my turn. I'm sitting in a small Section 8 apartment in Phoenix, Arizona, and my oldest son came up to me and he says, dad, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm fixing a computer for your grandma. He goes, can I watch? I said, sure. So he hopped in the back <laughs> of the chair. And whenever I did anything with computers, he was behind me. Then came my second son. Then came <laughs> my daughter. To this day, my oldest son is a data scientist with the company that I worked for. My youngest son works for uh, a company in Canada where they do... Uh, uh, cyber, cyber intelligence, and then my daughter's just finding her sea legs. But I say all this to say that you're never too old, you're never too ignorant, you have the opportunity, and it's amazing to me how love breeds mm -hmm. progression. <laughs> wow, fantastic! Thanks, thanks for that. That buddy. is that is great. That's wonderful. All right, maybe one back more. To you. Oh, okay, one more. Okay. okay. All right, we have a lot of people who want to share. So okay. wonderful. If you could keep it short so we can get back you to keep it short. Yeah. Our, yeah. our great speaker here. Artsy, yeah. you're up. <clears throat> um, hi. Um, thank hi, you so Artsy. much for doing this. 
uh, conversation, I always remembered one thing that my dad told me when I was younger, um, when he bought me my first computer, was that I needed to use it to make myself smarter and not just use it for entertainment. So <laughs> since I was 13, I've been building websites, learning coding, <laughs> uh, building businesses, and I've been an entrepreneur since I was 17 years old. So I'm the first generation entrepreneur, you know, and just born from my dad really instilling in me to use technology to grow and and learn. Wow. And, <laughs> yeah. Th thanks so. so much. Thanks, Arcee. Okay, Laurel, I'm, uh, you know, we'd love to hear from everyone. Uh, I'll talk about a little bit later about how maybe we can get your stories uh, later on. But uh, I want to turn back to Chris here. I have some more questions. You're not done yet. <laughs> well, Tom, Tom so, before we do that, can, can, can we get a round of applause for those stories that were shared? I just think. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And being absolutely. That, you know, Aren't we they have beautiful? the power to emote. I just like to see that just to know that was very endearing what was shared. And so thank you very much. I didn't mean to cut you off, Tom, but I just felt appropriate to express that. But please. You bet. Well, so certainly what's happened now is that you've had like um, the stories that we've heard you have now become the man yourself you are a spokesman for technology you are a spokesman for uh for a community that has been underserved now uh what are you going to do about it? i mean you obviously have seen this you know the problem you you have expressed that so what in the world are you going to do about it well, I wouldn't necessarily call and qualify myself as the man, I'm more of a servant, if you will. And <laughs> when I look at, um, but your sentiments are well uh, uh, received, if you will. Uh, the idea is, is that one of the things that I looked at early on, and, and indeed, I've had the opportunity, and you know, I could remember um, attending Hacker Dojo in a place called Mountain View, in the city of Mountain View, the city of Google. Many of you may mm -hmm. be familiar with it. And, you know, living outside of my car and coming in and taking all these technology classes and going outside sleeping. The 24-7 workspace, <laughs> living outside, and Google was right there, and NASA Ames across the street. And I'd come in there with shorts, flip-flops, and whatever kind of hacker t-shirt I'd have on, and I'd begin to build and hack and do the things, and I'd go to women's sessions and men's sessions. Okay. They'd all let me in, and I wanted Chris, to be in. Chris, sorry for it. Learn. I don't want to interrupt, but we seem to have lost megaphone on you. Should you make sure you're on air and on megaphone? Forgive me. Can you hear me? That's okay. Now we can hear you. Beautiful. Go for it. And so I was sleeping out of this parking lot and going inside this hacker space and I had men's sessions and women's sessions and all the different people that I've learned from and things like that. And then one day someone asked, hey, Chris, will you come and speak? And I did. And that began to perpetuate. I began to build and different modalities such as AI and XR and virtual augmented mixed reality and different types of technologies. And and I was so fascinated, and I've been fascinated for some time in different type of emerging technologies. And I called myself, and people would ask, they said, well, what are you? You know, I'm an international national speaker, but I'm also an emerging technologist. What's an emerging technologist? One that studies emerging technologies and applied sciences. And I've had the opportunity to see the different types of things people build, to build with people all across the country and speak at places like Mayo Clinic and speak in places uh, intercontinental and just all different types of companies and corporations and Google and Oculus and Microsoft and invited to speak uh, internationally in different places and to speak with different groups. And I say that to say is that, Tom, going to these places, I realized and I knew that Silicon Valley had a DNI problem or a diversity and inclusion problem, but I also began from visiting other technology hubs across the country and around the world that Technology has a diversity and inclusion problem. And I look at the audiences, and rarely was there anyone that looked like me. And this is guilt free. And I sit on stages, and naturally, whether I was on a panel or, you know, by myself, there wasn't too many people that looked like me. I would be sent invitations to events that we all enjoy and ones that I enjoy. And I see the speaker roster, 300 speakers, and not one single person looked like me. And it wasn't for the sake of a feel good initiative that I was looking at it. I knew people that were qualified to look like me to be able to speak at these events and they could articulate a thing just as next as just as good as the next uh, woman or man. But they weren't being invited. 
and I spoke with different people about this, and I started looking around, and I became an advocate for culture, but not as a feel-good initiative, but for us to be able to look at one of a few things, and this begs worth sharing. One of the things that we look at, and first of all, I'd be remiss in saying that when we talk about ecosystems, you hear ecosystem this and ecosystem that, and that ecosystems aren't a set of hardware and software. Ecosystems aren't keyboards and laptops and desktops and screens. Ecosystems are people. And when you look at that natively, what we have to do is go back even further beyond diversity, equity, inclusion, because you can go ask five DNI heads and five different corporations, what's the definition of diversity? And you're going to get five different definitions. Mm-hmm. You go ask leadership at the executive level, what's diversity? A lot of them will say that uh, isn't that uh, um, uh, isn't that a way for people to express affirmative action? And that's not the reality. And I've had to express to them from executive leaders to ERGs and different types of people and and, and publicly and saying, look, first of all, we must understand that when you add more culture to an ecosystem, especially ones that are homogenous, but when you add more culture to an ecosystem, it doesn't take away jobs. When you add more culture to an ecosystem, the whole ecosystem levels up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's number one. Number two is when we look at culture and i hate to break it down to the people that want to consider culture and technology separate culture is technology when people say art and technology art is technology in fact i would even submit that you can have art without technology but you cannot have technology without art (laughs) Mm -hmm. and so when we look at the ecosystem we have to go back natively and say what has it that we've been doing and what are we doing that's not right we've been building tom We've been building in a mono culture, and we should be building from a polycultural perspective. Yes. In other words, the more people that we have to build and buy these products, the better identifiable the products will become. And in other words, on top of that, we want to hire the people that we want to buy our products. I'm getting at with that. I'm getting at with this is this is that. One, I am not asking Silicon Valley for a handout. I'm extending a hand to help it. Mm-hmm. And two, some people have come up to me and said, well, Chris, we hear you talking about diversity, equity, inclusion, belonging. We hear that all the time. And, but look at Apple. Apple is valued at a $2 trillion company. And, and look at how much profits they've gained over the last 10 years. But I would submit them to consider that I believe that Apple would be valued as a $10 trillion company if they had more culture and inclusion in their system. In other words, we tend to look at these financial markings or key performance indicators as as a success level. But I think, and I consider that technology would actually be more great if we had more women. It would be more great if we had more people of color and black communities, if you will. I think that we could have achieved more already than what we have achieved thus far. Now, I said all that to say this, Tom. I looked around and I looked at the different kind of programs that were out there in STEM and STEAM for science, technology, engineering, mathematics. I, I've heard a lot of different programs, I've seen it. And one of the things that I became mindful of is that you can have all the educational programs out there, but if you can't put that education to use, in other words, for gainful employment, it serves the benefit of a rock in a garden that doesn't grow. And so what did I see? I realized mm-hmm. that there were a lot of corporations that were doing outreach, but their numbers continue to stay low. They're putting tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of dollars in searching the highways and the byways for black technology community contributors to work at their companies, but their numbers remain low, whether that was for people of color and even women. So what's the problem? So one of the things we have to look at is that outreach programs, they have to do more than just teach people. There has to be what we call last mile fulfillment. And so as I expressed earlier that I came to Silicon Valley, black colored skin, I was taught by people that did not look like me, both women and men alike. And it hit me and it dawned on me. I said, what if I can take all these people, and not just in Silicon Valley, but across the country, around the world, what if I could take all of these technologists, my colleagues, my peers, you, and what if I could take these hidden heroes 
and go back to places, transmetropolitan, places where I come from, Oakland and Compton and Brooklyn and Cleveland and Chicago. You know, instead of stepping on Chicago, why don't you do something to help Chicago? But that's a different story. I won't get too political. <laughs> but what if we can go back to these cities and get these hidden geniuses? And what if I could take these hidden heroes and pair them with these hidden geniuses and build a bridge? And so I did just that. And it was right around the time when Mr. George Floyd was murdered. And that became a real discussion and a topic in this land. Why now, in this COVID era time that we find ourselves in, why has it been so highlightable? Well, a lot of people weren't just seeing another black man being killed and persecuted and said, well, that sucks. I got a wedding to look forward to. That sucks. I got a date to go on tonight. Nobody has been going on weddings in that regard, and nobody has been going on dates, if you will, in that particular time. And so I saw what was happening. We all saw it on our TVs, whether we liked it or not, we saw it. And I saw a lot of people that look like me running in these streets, protesting, and I admit I'm not a protester, but everyone has a role to play and they must be allowed to play them. And I saw them, and a lot of people looked at these protesters and said, look at that riffraff, look at what they're doing. Don't, don't they have a place to go to? And the answer is no. And the answer is, is that that's not a show of anger. That is a showing of hurt. To be in a world where you have no opportunities in front of you, behind you, next to you, and there is no one in your life, from your teacher to your parent to your siblings, that can just simply show and help and point you in the right direction. Now, I would submit that each and every one of us here today, at some point, at some time, somebody has taken the time to simply point us in the right direction direction and so what i did and i saw that and i said as much as i have done in technology and as much as i've built a technology if i can go back and create and build this bridge then i have not accomplished anything and so i built a program and a platform called the black technology mentorship program and i launched it four months ago and I'm saying from my avatar to yours that I had no idea that it would take off the way that it has. And to be very transparent and to be very candid, I was scared to put it out there because I didn't know what my peers would say. I've had people that have, I've been met with contestation saying, Chris, we don't like it when you talk about diversity, but we, I'll still follow you because I love what you talk about when it comes to technology. Well, I'm sorry to break it down to you, but if you're getting technology from you, you'll be getting some culture with it. <laughs> You can't just get me and not get all of me. It's either you, it's, <laughs> hey, either you, you, you if you, if you, right? If you're going to get me, you're going to get all of me. You can't cherry pick this pie. <laughs> and so I put this out there. I put this program out there. I put out an answer. I put it on LinkedIn, a very active, wide audience. I put it out there. Let's see what the people say. And we started off with about 30 mentors that answered the call. That was huge. I didn't, I didn't even know if I'd get seven. And then we had about maybe about 100 mentees that were coming from everywhere to answer the call. And just over a little bit of four months, we now have 199 mentors from around the world. And we're now pushing past almost 2,000 active mentees in our pipeline these are mentees from k through 12 young adults and adults and the black technology mentorship platform is three things tom it's a mentor mentee program first it's education reimagined second and it's last mile fulfillment third and what last mile fulfillment is it focuses on two specific things one career path to actually and getting people earned opportunities as jobs. Getting yes. people jobs. We don't want just your education. We're, we're done with the hackathons. 
We're done with the pats on the backs. We're done with having our children and people coming and hearing from experts, and they could do nothing with it. Can you imagine someone taking you to something that you can never be part of? Can you imagine people going to look at Black Panther and see people that they look like in Marvel films and people that look like them, Wakanda, Wakanda, and their technologists, and those kids go back home to whatever homes and stated conditions they go to, and they know that they cannot do the things on the screen? Those days are done. Not only can you see it done in a film, but you can live that narrative and you can manifest that. And so that was one of the tracks is career path. And the other path is funded startups. We don't need to just teach people about entrepreneurship. We don't need to just teach people about startups. People want funded startups. We don't want just jobs at Google and Apple. We want to build the next Google and Apple. Yeah. People need funded startups from lab to funding, lab to market initiatives. How much the Silicon Valley, how much the Silicon Valley, how many VCs have given, how much capital, candidly, the white homogenous males, a ton of money, not even women, not even community of colors that have funded these startups and failed. Give us an opportunity. Give us an opportunity. Let us build. Give us an opportunity to pitch to you. That's all we're asking. We're not asking for a handout. We're asking to give an opportunity to pitch. And so that's what this program is about. And I'm happy to say that two days ago, we just started our autumn launch. Our autumn session, we have over 20 sessions. We've got people from Google. We've got people from Pixar. We've got people from Microsoft. We've got people from all kinds of platforms that are speakers, educators, and advisors with this program that are teaching. We have over 20 sessions this month, and we just started this week, and the sessions have begun, and we're already getting it geared up for winter. And I cannot tell you from my heart to your heart or for your avatar heart to mine just how much of a big deal that is. Mm -hmm. Wow. So that is beautiful. That is so beautiful. <laughs> and so Tom, while while Christopher re-enters again, um, okay. we have some audio issues. Are you, do you have another question for the audience? Well, let's go back to the original question about this okay. mentorship. Uh, those of you who raised your hand before, perhaps we could continue to go down the list. Yep. Laurel. All right. So raise your hand. Paul, you're up. So good afternoon, everybody. Uh -oh. Hello. That's I'm all right. Here. It happens all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Being part of the, there you go. Uh, I'm on, I'm on laptop. So, hey, there we go. That's fine. So, yes. Yeah. So, um, my story. Um, my mom was from South Carolina, and she's the oldest twin of ten. And so, um, it was up. She was thank to, thanks to her. She actually spent a year at MIT. Um, she was the first in her family to graduate from South Carolina State University, and spent. 30 years in the army as a civilian and so we moved like almost every two years so when i was in sixth grade living in cambridge um it was the computers at the bookstore that turned me on and so i spent a lot of time in the bookstore when she was at mit and eventually i wound up getting my own computer and then um, went to grad undergrad at Prairie View and a store Google black college in texas and thanks for the nsf uh national science foundation fellowship I was able to get my PhD from Texas A&M in 98. Moved to Seattle and did research at, uh, at Boeing and virtual and augmented reality. And Tom, I met you a couple yeah. of times when we were at the Hit Lab. And mm -hmm. actually, I was at CIFX mm -hmm. and shot your, 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 your speech. <laughs> That's your talk right. there. <laughs> Fantastic. And actually, I mean, the world was so small that just the other day, I was part of Chris's uh, you know, event where he had uh, hosted all the, uh, the new mentees, our mentors. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, um, since COVID, it's been, I mean, it's good and bad. It's happened since COVID. You know, I bought a question right when, the, uh, the, when the virus hit and have been doing a lot of learning, uh, relearning about um, virtual realities using Unity now. And so I'm taking a class mm -hmm. here in Allspace with uh, Robert yeah. on yeah. how to use Unity mm -hmm. to build experiences and rooms and games. Not games, I hate to say games. The virtual and games that experiences exactly <laughs> and so yeah so yeah so i'm excited That's i'm great. excited about this yeah so uh you know i want to help chris out i want to help you uh dr furnace out to expand the knowledge of virtual reality and mixed reality and 
augmented reality and help out. That's a, this is the last thing. So one of the things I'm doing now is that I'm disabled. I'm still walking around. I have a, I have a neurological impairment, I'll say. And I know uh, a physical therapist at the Swedish Neurological Institute. I know um, a gentleman who's the CEO of Mixed Reality, a company out of uh, West Seattle. And I know the director of the XR Lab at Bellevue College. And so I brought the three mm -hmm. together to get um, headsets for patients at the Neurological Institute to have um, virtual experiences. And as a matter of fact, just last week, there was an AR VR uh, expo. There was a panel discussion where Jeff, the CEO of Mix, Mixed Reality, and Simon, the physical therapist from Swedish, talked about mm -hmm. VR and physical physical therapy. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm really overwhelmed and overjoyed being able to share my knowledge, and I want to continue with that. So as I learn Excellent. more, I'm going to share it. Oh, yes, thank sir. you, Thanks Paul. so much, Paul. You're welcome. Really That's beautiful. That. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Okay, well, let's let's turn back to, to Chris while we have him on the hot seat. You're not done yet, Chris. <laughs> so Chris, uh, Chris and I have started uh, talking about this program, the Black, te um, Black uh, Technology Mentorship Program. And uh, the more he told me about it, the more I got excited about because this fits right into what we feel is a virtual society mission. One of the mainstreams of what we're trying to do is look beyond any kind of ethnicity. I've never seen a kid, a dumb kid. I think all children need to have access and opportunity for this technology as well as adults and, uh, and those in between. And so Chris and I have been discussing the prospects of joining forces, becoming teammates, uh, where we have an alliance between the BTMP program and the Virtual World Society program. And we want to announce today that that's going to happen. And we have, uh, we have had a number of discussions about that. Caitlin Krauss is in the audience here. She has been a part of helping us organize this activity. And uh, uh, good brother, we're going to be connected here with this. But I wanted you to uh, sort of remark about what you see as value to what you're trying to do that can come from the virtual world society and maybe something like the learning living room. Sure. Um, and first, I want to express uh, the, the sentiments of that with the virtual society that we are indeed uh, about forming and establishing relationships and real genuine partnership uh, with those platforms, whether it's XR Relator and technology in general, uh, that really have a heart, that really want to do more outside of what they do, and to be able to reach across a hand to the aisle, if you will. And Tom and I, you know, upon meeting him, I felt like I met Yoda, you know, and I felt like I wasn't even halfway decent Luke Skywalker. So, you know, it's just sitting with him talking about these things, you know, I have a good regard for my elders, if you will, but sitting here talking about it, Tom, you know, we had to have some frank and candid conversation, you know, and some of my apprehensions, you know, is here I am dealing with someone that is of an older nature, and let's be completely transparent, you know, he comes from a generation, and I'm not saying and placating that on Tom at all, but he comes from a generation where his generation, one of people that look like me or my parents from their mouth to my ears had to go eat in the back of restaurants and drink from different water fountains. Um, mm -hmm. But I found Tom not to be of that ilk. Um, and so I had to kind of find out what kind of guy was I dealing with before I was subject our whole cohort to working with this establishment and this company. And so we had some candid conversation and some frank talk about what kind of person that he's going to be when it comes to virtual world society and what kind of platform is virtual world society going to be for extended reality. Because one of the things that I often and do say, and I humbly say, but I say it um, with all due respect uh, towards all of my peers, that you know, we haven't done a good job when it comes to virtual augmented reality. And what I mean by that is when I go into a space and invited to speak or a different event, and certainly not all space, but other spaces I'm invited to, and the only option I have is a blonde white male or a blonde white female as an avatar. And I ingress into this space and I begin to realize that maybe this space wasn't built for me, <laughs> regardless of the invitation. And when I look at so many different XR companies that have been well-funded 
and there's barely a single person of color hired throughout their roster, I become not a fan of XR and what XR is. I love the technology, but I don't really love the people that build it. When I look at companies like Magic League, multiple billions of dollars, you can have all the money you want mm -hmm. as a startup, but if you do not have culture, and if you're not reaching out to the communities that buy your products, you will not sell anything. And so when I look at companies that I've asked and extended a hand to Magic League, I think you have a culture problem. We don't want to hear from you. right? Mm -hmm. And I can name a lot of other platforms, but their demise is their demise, and it's set. And so one of the things that we absolutely miss must be sure of and that we must be aware of is that if we are going to extend reality then we must bring reality with it and so if you're going to bring people into an immersive virtual simulated environment if we can't get it right in the physical how can we get it right in the virtual in other words, we have to make sure that the people that are building these constructs, these hardware and software, need to have more women and need to have more people of color. So when I look at the virtual world society and I look at their roster, even I know that they can do better, as we all. And so when I looked at it, I said, do you have the heart of vulnerability? Do you have the heart of an open mindset? Do you have the heart? To even do better with your platform and i found that answer to be yes and so we're going to form a relationship tom and i and it's not just tom and i helping out our communities that's one of the things i talk about with btmb the black technology mentorship program and i said to a big group of our mentors yesterday this program is not about a bunch of mentor professionals helping the less fortunate mentees this is a bi-directional beneficial platform and our mentees may uh, may benefit your lives in the end more than you have mm -hmm. benefited theirs yeah. and so when we talk about the virtual world society and the relationship with btmp the idea is for our virtual learning living room program that tom has come up with and i absolutely subscribe to is that we want to go and we need to go back to the household and to the family and even now in the time of COVID, there are students that are working that are back at the house. And it all, I believe, begins with the family. And if we can teach them young and old, and if we can teach them about technology and what it's about and to use it as a family unit, and that could even just be one, but to teach them in their living rooms, and not just teach them about virtual reality, Tom, but also right. be able to show them how they can build virtual reality and be able to get some type of accreditation where they can actually get a job. And so when they go on their mm -hmm. application, our mentees, and look, no matter the color, no matter the gender, but don't leave black people out, please. They can go, they can go to Oculus and say, hey, you know what? I'm an engineer, but I'm also part of the Virtual World Society and BTP's Learning Living Room Project, where we had hands-on experience at the living room, and I was able to interact with other cultures from other people on other people and other planets from across uh, other planets from other countries. We're not there yet. Why not other planets? Other countries, <laughs> and we're able to interact with them, and we're able to work, and we're able to build remotely in virtual mm -hmm. spaces. And look the, look, the data is out now. There's a lot of tech companies, big ones, that are saying, hey, you never have to come back and work again because distant remote working is actually working. In fact, they've come to find out that some people and some of their uh, uh, employees have been more productive working mm -hmm. virtually than they have having to take a two and a half hour commute out of their day and to go in and go out. Let people alone. Let's get rid of the 14, 16 hour work week and embrace this technology so that we can work more comfortably, if you will. And if you want to go in, go ahead. If you don't, working telepresence is the future. So we never considered, because usually technology is a disruptor of other technology, but we did not consider that a pandemic would disrupt technology. And to the very foundation of how you and I work every single day. I I don't know about y'all. I've seen more of the inside of people's living rooms in the last seven in the last seven months than I have in the last ten years by way of Zoom. And here's the thing we have to get right to, Tom. We 
we when the pandemic hit we said virtual reality it's time now it's time it's time look people haven't completely wrapped their mind around how to use zoom let alone alt space so I, what I'm saying is there's a lot of things that we have to look at when it comes to virtual reality. And the thing that we have to remember is, and we have to be mindful of is that it, it's going to be a place for everyone to build, then build it and have it built by everyone that you want to use it. And safety and security mm -hmm. matter. People want to feel safe in here. Anti-harassment needs to be better, needs to be better updated. And I'm sorry to say, but if you have 10 white males in a room that build a virtual construct, what do they know about harassment when it comes from different perspective lens? Mm -hmm. We need to get more voices because as I've said, this isn't about a feel-good initiative hiring a woman or person of color. This is about the safety and security to the very fundamental construct of technology itself. And if you do not have this, if you do not have cultural inclusion, just continue to turn on your TV and to see the manifestation of what it's like to exclude whole communities and tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands and millions of people from the great build. Society will be affected as a whole as it is now. And so everyone either needs to have a seat at the table or enough tools to build our own table and with virtual world society we want every heart and mind and willing heart and mind to build with us because we want to look at virtual world society as the heart of xr and i trust that tom can lead this initiative he has my backing and support especially when it comes to the black community and the participation and i will help to keep tom honest as he will do the same with me and we will do our level best to make sure that we produce a program that we hope that all of you will be proud of Hooray. Thank you, Chris. You got it, brother. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't, I was going to ask you another question, but I think you already have done it. Um, uh, the, you know, you have told us, you have opened your heart to us. You express something that is not only excites us, but sort of helps us to understand there's a whole nother world out there that is um, a beautiful and wonderful world of all this talent that hasn't been tapped and i remember what you told me the first time we met you said i'm in this position where all these companies are coming to me and say you know i have i have, uh, I have money to, to hire 50 black engineers who should i go hire and you look at them and say there aren't any uh they aren't available because that's, they've been neglected all this time. And the only way that that is going to be filled, kind of things you're talking about, is with the kind of program that you're doing and we will do together, is companies need to start growing their own. They need to be reaching down and lifting and providing not only instruction, but internships. So uh, these young people, whoever they are, old people maybe, have a chance right. to get to work and, and to see what and, it's like to be in that environment, in that company and in that environment. And get to work. And that's the thing is it keeps companies and corporations more honest too to say that they can't find the talent. I'm subscribing for technology companies to stop trying to find talent and to raise mm -hmm. their own talent. In fact, yes. I'll even be frank that I told several companies and corporations from Zoom to Zoom in front of them. I said, if your idea is to throw a check, at btmp to be able to sponsor this then i don't want it but if you're mm -hmm. saying that you want to financially contribute and you're willing to help build curriculum development so that our mentees can learn and better understand your company and the doctrine of it therein so that they can get a job and you're willing to participate in mentorship to work with our talent not just throw money at our black mentees then i will take that and we're doing just that and we're in conversations with several company and corporations that mm -hmm. are willing to answer the call not just to give us a check because i don't want it but to give us a check and to also participate because the participation means more than a dollar that they can give us and i have a whole slew of people that are working with us internally diana tucker shannon carlton flora chang we are female majority ran our platform internally is majority ran for women led, and I feel very proud of that. And I say that not as a talking point, but we talk about doing more listening, and we talk about 
reaching outside of yourself. Hear me as a black man, that does not exclude me. And I said, you know what? I need the best in the available and the willing to come help build this platform and the women that I'm so fortunate to work alongside with and they're leading, if you will. I feel so great to do that. And I have seen before my eyes manifesting what it is that to be able to adopt a new mindset on how to start a business and to build a business, that it's best to hire people and get out of their way and to work with people and get out of their way and let them do what they do best. And we just have a team that's just doing such a yeoman's job. And I cannot do it without them. I'd be remiss in not bringing them up. Wow, Chris. Thank you so much. Thank you for this opportunity we've had. To think. And I'm so excited about the prospects of working together with him. This is going to be re-entering here. Um, yep. Uh, what uh, uh, we want to do is uh, we're going to uh, time, our time is up with the regular session. Oh, but let, that is so painful. Let, <laughs> but we but we're going to hang around. Chris and I have agreed to hang around so that you can come up and ask us uh, any other questions or comments you might want to have. I do want to mention a couple other things here. Let's see if I can. In, uh, okay, really quickly, slide. I'd like to let people in room know, room two know there's not okay. enough room to merge the two rooms together, so we apologize greatly. If you'd like to try to re-enter the event, you may be able to um, come into room one. There's just a little bit of space left in here, but this has been an incredibly popular event. So our apologi okay. uh, apologies that you won't be able to talk to them after the event closes because we'll be turning off um, on air in just a few minutes. Tom, it's no. you. Would like to close this okay. out? Okay, you bet. Uh, just a, a reminder that uh, you're, we would love for you who haven't already to join the Virtual World Society. It's free. We want you to indicate your uh, willingness to serve as a, in a uh, mentorship position working uh, with this program that we just talked about with, with Chris. Um, also, other activities at the Virtual World Society that we've been talking about over the last few months. Uh, also, um, uh, we're going to have a, a neat event coming up um, on uh, the 22nd, two weeks from today. We're going to have a Halloween party. <laughs> and Laurel and Mark and others at, and uh, Donna at um, the Educators in VR are helping build a spooky world for us. And it's going to be a networking event where hopefully we'll have Chris there with us and you'll have a chance to have some one-on-one -on -one time with Chris and our other speakers that we've had over the last few months. So put that on your, um, your calendar in two weeks uh, that we're going, to, <laughs> we're going to do some spooky things. And, um, and then if you want to get in touch with Chris, here are some uh, con contact information for you. Um, I think what you told us, Laurel, is that you're going to shut us off and we can't uh, communicate anymore no, with anybody? No, you know, you, as long as you're on, on air and on the Amplify Your Voice, both rooms can hear. If you want okay. to keep the raise home, hand open, we can do that too. I'm just saying that if, we tr if you go off on, on air and you stop doing the megaphone, room two can't hear you. Okay, okay. But we can Understand. keep going. You can keep going as long okay. as you want. Okay, well, let's have some questions then. Questions All for right. Chris. So let's check the question queue. And we have Majik Show. You're up. All right. Can you all hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes. You bet. Awesome. Awesome. First off, Mr. Furness, Mr. Lafayette, thank you so much for this opportunity to come hear you all. I'm telling you, when I say that I was keeping my calm, but I was jumping up and down in my chair and raising my hands, <laughs> it might it might have come up a few times. Um, I just wanted to say, uh, Chris, what you were talking about uh, is amazing. I represent a, a group that was started organically right here in Alt Space called Metaculture. And what it was actually was a group of VRs that we just happened to have in common that we love you know, to be in this space. And we started, as we got together and began to discuss certain things, we talked about how a number of the problems that we uh, face in our to professional- to interrupt. Um, not seeing um, in room two, magic in um, room two. Uh, he's on air. Okay. Um, hmm. Hold on, hold on, Magic, just a minute. I'm gonna turn you off and back on. Um, so if anything happens, please hit the raise hand again. Let's see if we can resolve this. 
All right, Mark, is Majik back in? Is he in your room? Yep, I'll see him. Yep. There Thank you go. Okay, okay. Majik, please Thanks, keep going. Yeah. Next, no, next, no worries. <laughs> All right. Um, no, so basically what I was saying is that, um, so we we talked about a number of the problems that, that you all are bringing solutions to, and thank you for that. And we decided to do something ourselves by creating this organization within Altspace to start bringing um, awareness to, you know, the, the, the imbalance, to start coming together, to put together events, to bring about awareness, to put together production and just show, okay, how the amazing things that you can have when you bring diversity into the picture. I, I'm absolutely blown away. People on the team are are here and we've been messaging each other back and forth, <laughs> just hearing in text. That's great. <laughs> and and we we would love to serve as a support system, you know, for your organization. And however we can help, we would love to, you know, extend the conversation to be able to do that. Fantastic. Fantastic, right, Chris? Yeah, it is fantastic. Yeah. And Sign them up. For, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely connect and, and get together. And and your sentiments echo a lot of other sentiments from organizations that I never even knew existed, but it did. And uh, I think you know we're willing to take a, a, a you know a, 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 a servant's heart, if you will. And so if mm -hmm. that's what you know we can do uh, together, then you know we definitely uh, extend an open hand, uh, and we welcome you, brother. Mm -hmm. yeah. Excellent. Thank you, Majik. Beautiful. And you know that educators in VR got started in yes here in in all space, and then we drug virtual world society in. So That's right. Let possible. me mention that you know our <laughs> first our really first great experience in partnering has been with educators in VR. And let me tell you, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. It's been oh, amazing what the educators in VR have done for us. We never would have been able to do. And uh, basically, you did drag us into walking the it, talk. Tom, megaphone, absolutely. Um, and some reason my megaphone was off too, so we've got lots of fun going on with the megaphones. Um, <laughs> yes, we made you walk the walk. You and did. I am <laughs> so honored and thrilled, and we are so privileged to have you in here. And I have to tell you just on a personal note, and Chris, you're going to love this, Tom becomes 12 years old when he comes into alt space. It is hysterical. He's like a kid in a candy factory because it's like, oh, this is real. This is awesome. Oh, this is so cool. I love it. And it is a beautiful thing. It is a beautiful thing. And I just love it. All right. Let's see who else is up to share their thoughts. And here is Jay Hayes. You're up. Jasper Hayes. Jasper? The thing. Oh, it called this. But this, uh, uh... Okay, so Jasper's having some issues with his audio. Sorry about that. Um, okay, we have up next, or see, uh, Bruce from XR Labs. Are you still with us? Nope, he's not with us. All right, Caitlin Kraus. Hey, Caitlin. Uh, Caitlin. Glad you're here. Hey. Oh, great to be here. Wow, what an awesome presentation and talk. So inspiring. Um, I'm just adding to what Magic Show had said behind me. Uh, how do people get involved? Like, what's the best way? <laughs> no, I mean, no, I know Caitlin in room two. <laughs> oh, no, Caitlin in room two. <laughs> okay, hang on a second. I'm shouting hang on. on the rooftop. Yep, let me, uh, let me do this again. <laughs> I think room okay, two Caitlin. is lost across the lake there. Are you back? <laughs> All right. Testing Mark, one, two, three. Do we have Caitlin? Okay. <laughs> yes. We have Caitlin. All right. It's all yours. Thanks. Well, lovely. I'm just uh, so excited and enthusiastic about this program. I know from the inside, it's just an honor to be involved. And uh, I'm wondering if there are other people in the audience like Magic Show who want to be. Good question. Okay. We just. She something just. Let me do it again here. I don't know. She muted herself. All right, Caitlin. All right. Try again. Testing. Testing. One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Testing. Can you so can you, you hear me? Other people. Yes. yes. Other people we hear you. Okay. All right. So you hear me? Yes. Yes. Yeah. What if what if someone wants to sign up? How do they go about that avenue for getting involved in learning li living room or supporting the BTMP, what do you think is the best way? 
Well, I'll answer, I'll start off, and then Chris can add to what uh, that I say. Certainly, if you if you go and sign up in the Virtual World Society, it's the same as signing up in the BTMP. Or you're going to the BTMP, it's the same as signing up in the Virtual World Society. We do have a place on our website where you can sign up to be a volunteer, not only to become a member and 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 the benefits that come with membership, but also to um, to be a volunteer and. What uh, Caitlin, by the way, let me make this announcement as well, that Caitlin Krauss uh, is now joined the staff of the Virtual World Society as our Director of Community and Business Development and is now working with uh, organizations like BPMP and educators in VR and others that the, the, the United Nations um, uh, Young Gov, those kind of organizations that have been introduced by Laurel to us um, to build this relationship where we have an alliance of our activities marching together. I mean, we can't do all these things by ourselves, but we have these, um, these organizations like uh, we've heard already that uh, can, if we work together and we share the same values, we can change the world. And because we have a group of passionate people and, and we already are aligned, all we need to do is just get in a lockstep. And by the way, together we carry a big stick so people start paying attention to what we're doing. Yeah. So Chris, thanks so much, you, Tom. I, you oh, I just Chris wanted to add, I, to I, I appreciate being on board and it's great to be together. And a word just occurred to me today, momentum. You know, for mm. the past four months, we've all been doing maybe different things separately. And how do we build that momentum together? Mm -hmm. And you two just articulated that today. So thanks so much. And I'm super excited to be on board. You bet. All right. Great. Thanks, Caitlin. This is great. All right. So now, um, all right. Anyone else with any questions? You just hit the raise hand button. We would love to have you um, ask your question. Or share your insights. Well, meanwhile, uh, Chris, you could you could uh, do you want to say anything about what uh, Caitlin mentioned? Sure. Um, com for slash BTMP. Uh, the what's interesting about it when we did it, I didn't have a bandwidth. I'm afraid you're breaking out quite a bit, Chris. Yeah, Chris, do you want to try re-entering again? This time we're getting some internet bandwidth kind of issues. Right? I'm so sorry. Yeah. I'm so no, sorry. That's not your fault. No, no, it's not that's, uh... you. Just re-enter and we'll get you back in. So just re-enter yeah. the room. Yeah. It's all good. And hopefully you can get back in. And um, do you want to go for a question or wait for him to come back? Uh, well, uh, let's let's talk about another uh, mentor experience that we talked about, role model. Let's see, and let's let's see. Andrew. Andrew is up and um hi jay hayes if you could am i more clear now that would be lovely no oh, you're back clear. where are okay. you am i more clear oh there now? you are you're and coming Andrew, you're coming yeah you're clear been, can you Andrew's hear me given mega, all right Andrew's yes gonna, yep we are. turn your megaphone so on in your own air thing oh, and 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 andrew's now gone okay you're on chris so yeah i saw so many sad emojis and i was like is it a bad thing i'm telling you how to be part of the this program and I realized you couldn't hear me, so <laughs> I think more hard, yeah. more preferred. I just got out a real <laughs> visceral experience of a, of a right. sad emoji experience for the first time in <laughs> and, and alt space, and I, and I start feeling some type of way, but I'm feeling a lot more enthusiastic about all this hearts I'm staying. Um, <laughs> ChristopherLafayette.com forward slash DTMP, and you know, and I would challenge and I would inspire to ask at least if we can get a third of you. I don't really mean this, your commitment is light, and the commitment is light. <laughs> You know, there's a lot of, on people's shoulders right now and a lot on people's plates right now to even serve their own selves and to build their own selves. And the commitment is an hour a year. If you can afford an hour a year, then you certainly can fit the bill to become a mentor. And that's all I'm asking for you to go on ChristopherLafayette.com, find out the mentor sheet, just fill that out and be part of it. We had a major mentor meeting yesterday. We had such a, an incredible attendance yesterday. Um, and just become part of that. Receive the newsletter. See what's going on. Kick the tires. You don't have to buy it the first time around. See what it's about. And I think you'll find a little bit of place in your heart, just a little place in the small sitting suite, sitting of a swing in your heart, just a little place to set this program in it. And if you could do that, we'd be appreciative. Uh, uh, you know, and, and to be candid, you know, we we haven't taken a dime from anyone. We haven't asked anyone for anything. And 
And that's just not how this program runs because I wanted to see what we could do with organic growth. And I wanted to see how further the heart went as mm -hmm. opposed to the wallet. And you'd be mm -hmm. surprised at what you can do with a lot of heart and no money. And I'm mm -hmm. seeing it before my very eyes to see what happens when you have a whole lot of heart and no money. Nobody's paid on our team, not even myself. The days and nights and the things and the commitment that people are putting into this program, including our mentors, there's a whole lot of heart. And I'm really just becoming increasingly a fan of what people are willing to do if they put their heart into it. And so that's all we ask for you. If you have a little bit of time and a willing heart to come be part of this, and maybe one day we'll find ourselves with enough resources and, and we feel confident to build our own standalone site for BTMP. But I realized that there was a lot of black programs that that are good out there right now that you've never even heard, you know, that never see the light of day is because no one's ever really heard of them and the people that lead it and build it and like. And I had to launch this program in, in, in concert with my own brand, which people have heard. And so I've had to leverage that and, 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 and I'm so thankful for the opportunity because there's this, I certainly wouldn't have the market marketing capacity to even get this out to, to anyone out there as so many people just don't enjoy that. And there's so many other programs and I'll say this, if you don't join our program, then find one that does serve. It doesn't have to be ours. Mm -hmm. But I tell you what, I think you'll feel a little bit better waking up the next day when you find yourself in certain <laughs> leadership and being able to help and to give back, which what's what's been uh, fortunately been given to you. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. That's beautiful. All right, Tom, you want to close this thing down? Okay, troops. Well, it's been a wonderful time. I mean, I had so much fun, like Laurel says, I, I go back to my 12-year-old uh, body and my, well, at least not my body, <laughs> but <laughs> but my spirit. <laughs> um, I wish I could go back to my 12-year-old body. Um, so remember that uh, you have an opportunity to, and then Chris just has given us a, a, a challenge that uh, at least one-third of us to sign up. Uh, hopefully, we'll have 100% sign up. Uh, to the um, to these activities, the BTMP Learning Living Room Virtual World Society, um, that uh, where we really are trying, as Chris said, I appreciate what he said that we are trying to be the heart of of this technology. And it really, in the end, like it's not about the technology, uh, the technology, the VR, AR, they're just tools, and it's what right. we do with those tools, and and they'll they'll be obsolete someday and there'll be other tools that take their place so the virtual world society the btmp program all of these are not virtual reality programs they are programs that have to do with basically awakening and igniting imagination and creativity and new ways to think about education and the bottom line is if we are able to get jobs for people regardless of their circumstances then that raises the tide for everybody and that means that a lot of these problems we see today are because of anger because of people just don't have access don't have opportunity there's nothing wrong with their heads it's just they don't have opportunity and so we want to level that playing field so that those great ones not just in high tech but the artists the poets the uh, uh the theater people the uh the doctors everybody right. um can can have a chance to be appreciated for who they are and what they have inside of them and their own creativity their own imagination and by the way that's the only thing that's going to save our planet is the human the superpower of human imagination i believe so uh, with that, thanks for coming. Thank you, Chris, for this time you spent with us. Hopefully you'll be back with us in a couple of weeks and you can spend a little more one-on-one -on -one time. But we'll be hanging out here for a little bit later. So um, you're a good man. Thank you, Tom. 